um, welcome back. I hope you all had a great lunch. Um, yeah, let's just start off. Go ahead. Hi, uh, well, thank you for coming. I don't know wanted to hear this, I don't know. Um, I'm considering myself to be part of the comic relief track here, so this is not all too serious. <laughs> it is, to a certain degree, but not that much. Um, I'm from Shack Space, uh, the Stuttgart hackerspace, and we're doing a bit of uh, improbable science and space stuff. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, HGG or uh, hackerspace global grid. So uh, let's get started. Once upon a time, pretty much a year ago, uh, there were three guys on a train and we wanted to understand a bit about satellite communications. And we sketched out this big, big plan to build a network of uh, receiver stations, just for kids. Um, and, well, shortly after, we teamed up with... Uh, where is he? No, oh, he's, he's next to no, uh, <laughs> uh, Andreas, who is doing the Constellation project. And he had a pretty similar idea. Uh, he wanted to build a distributed ground station network to track amateur uh, satellites. So, right now, we're building a distributed measurement network and we're aiming to track ham radio satellites. So, um, all in all, we have no clue what we're doing, so we wanted to start off with a modular system so that we can develop on one little tiny aspect of our distributed ground station network and make it easy to extend and easy to improve because we're building something that we don't know about so if one thing isn't working throw it away build it new we wanted this distributed network it's basically a time provider thingy so it's, it's a modular system where you plug in your measurement module and you get high accuracy timing and geolocation services so we wanted to have this uh, very accurate and one second is pretty much Boring, so we're aiming for 100 nanoseconds. We'll see how well that works. And we wanted to allow the system to scale up to ridiculous, at least for a hobby project. So, um, I told you that we want to play uh, or track amateur satellites. That is a bit ambitious, especially if you start off knowing nothing. So, we decided as a first step, let's track airplanes, then track satellites or simply measure background radiation, or whatever, just the temperature. Uh, once we have one of the little ground station measurement thingies, uh, we can make many of them, network them together, and provide geo-referenced or uh, geo-coded data. It should ideally be easy to build. You could well, make all on your own. You could also assemble a kit, or if you're lazy, just buy it at some point in the future. Um, now you're probably thinking, who is as stupid as this? And um, that would not be that many guys, actually. Um, it's Armin, Tim, uh, myself, and that guy there. <laughs> I'm not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have a few uh, international friends that uh, found us uh, based on a talk we gave previously, which had a quite interesting press echo. Um, and they're working on some aspects of the pro uh, project. And what we're actually doing, um, the core idea, there is already a lot of information out there covering all things, uh, like the ham radio community has a lot of stuff on pretty much everything that you can do with satellite communication, uh, radio frequency stuff. Um, there's a very active amateur satellite community. There's a lot of hackers and makers worldwide that are building random stuff. And one of the goals of our project is also to collect all this information and improve the documentation in parts where we as novices have problems. Um, and the whole thing is pretty much a basic infrastructure thing for a bit of a larger, stupid, crazy project uh, in the hacker community. So we also want to uh, do the groundwork and uh, give others a solid base to uh, 
build their projects on. So, what we've learned along the way um, is, of course, uh, integrated circuit uh, PCB design. We did some FPGA programming, which was rather nasty. Uh, we did a lot of microcontroller programming in C, and we, uh, well, we did our best on that part. <laughs> it's not that simple. Um, we have all the code that we have currently available up on GitHub. We have this nice website here, which is basically a wiki, so everyone can edit. Um, we're aiming to make everything that we do, also the data that we gather, uh, public. So you can do measurements and get the raw data. And it will be easy to deploy your own measurement stage because it's fully documented, it's a fully open source project, you can join, do whatever. Um, but what can you actually do with it? So here uh, Andreas comes in with uh, his Constellation project. Uh, he wanted to track amateur satellites because there's that brief gap between orbit insertion and when uh, NORA thinks it's a good idea to re-release uh, Kepler data. Uh, we're trying, or this is one of the goals, we're trying to track the satellites quicker than NORA. We'll see how well that works. Um, the idea here is that we have multiple ground stations, at least five, ideally a lot more, and do uh, pseudo-ranging of uh, the beacon signal that these amateur radio satellites are sending out. So, once we have this network in place, it's, the possibilities become pretty much endless because it's easy to plug in a different module and get well, all the high accuracy timing and geo location data for free. So you can do live tra tracking of background radiation levels, spot minute changes to environment over time, simply plug in a module that you design, it's an open. Um, yeah, and it's also the basis for you want to do assisted GPS solutions. And many, many more. So, status quo. We've been busy over the last year. Um, building a bad plane and some hardware. Uh, right now we've got a pretty breadboardy-ish uh, system that is abusing PCI Express uh, plugs. Um, it's basically a back plane, looks like this. Um, it, well, except for the paper part. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the, the basic idea is each module gets plugged into one of these slots. We have one specialized module where you see the paper. It uh, looks a bit different in the current version. Uh, that is handling all the arbitration and bus master uh, stuff, interrupt handling, so the individual modules can communicate with each other. We have one power supply module. We are building one module uh, that we're using to uh, track ADSB signals with. This is the signal that commercial aircraft are sending out to tell everyone where they are, which will be a lot easier to uh, receive uh, than the satellite beacons. And it should be rather easy to scale this up because we can simply go to well, nine slots. Right now we have four. Uh, enough for prototyping. Here, um, this is the prototype of the ADSB tracker. Um, it's based on a mini ADSB module that you can buy this off the shelf, um, solder it together, and have raw ADSB signals from all the planes that are flying around here. And it's pretty neat because it contains, uh, amongst the flight number, also data like this is my GPS position and I'm this high up and I'm flying in this direction at this speed. And if you use this, you can uh, prototype and verify your pseudo-ranging algorithms because you can pseudo-range and uh, detect the position that you think where the plane is. And then once you did that, you also know where it actually was because it's encoded in the signal. Um, one of the core modules, however, is our timing source. This is where the nasty FPGA programming comes in and where Tim will be uh, going a little deeper because this is the current prototype that we're working on. 
Uh, it's basically uh, FPGA at the core, having a higher accuracy <coughs> timing. We have a low accuracy timing microcontroller and uh, currently a low cost GPS module with external antenna support. Um, it's probably a good idea if Tim is taking over at this point to uh, tell you a little bit of uh, timing module. Um, what we're doing is, uh, anyone have any questions? So details about the antenna and the microwave frequency range will be presented in this talk now. Um, if not, so I will ask you about like, what's the micro frequency range and some details about the antenna that you um, have. We actually have, we actually haven't looked into the antenna power of receiving the amateur radio satellites that much at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still in the process of getting the system at its core up running. Mm -hmm. And once that is working, you can, or we're building a module that you can simply plug in, mm -hmm. uh, receive the electron radio satellite signals, and go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but since modularity is at the core of this whole project, it, mm -hmm. it should be rather simple. That's what we tell ourselves. Okay. And, yeah. Anybody else? Was it e paper in the module, or is it? <laughs> the paper? Yeah, it was not the paper, but it looks like e-paper before the printing was on, on the module. Did you know? Um, what? Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you a nice photo. It's photo. Oh, oh, no, no, no. no, 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 no. Ah, okay. That would be awesome. Because it, that, that would be awesome. Printing electronics on paper. Oh, well, why is it on the This is more good for a high end. You are so nice to me. So that's why I have a laser. <laughs> yeah, um, well, uh, you might have noticed already this is a hobby prospect. So we're not taking the science too serious. We're just planning as we go. Um, I have a question. Um, your, um, how do you get funding? Uh, right now, we don't get much funding except the money we spend on it ourselves, which is reasonable at this point. I think still below 1k euro. Okay. Uh, it's it's a hobby project, and I want it to be independent of everyone, so that no one can tell us, well, I donated money to you, why aren't you working faster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Question. Will you, get, will you have problems when you're going to try military satellites for, and publish their data? Uh, I can neither deny or confirm any plans to so stupid that they could be detected, they want to be detected, so otherwise they would be silent. Yeah, there, there will be, ideally, at some point in the future, probably, uh, a lot of ground stations, and if you have receiver modules uh, receiving some kind of signal that you can triangulate, and then it comes from a source where you know there should be no satellite, I don't know. It's fun. Hey, yes. It's a hobby project. <laughs> um, just like a non-science question. How do you explain chat to the member of the public? Oh, um, this is actually not that difficult. Uh, we are what you can call a hackerspace, which can also be called a maker lab or whatever. It's basically your, uh, your hobby room in your basement uh, turns to 11. Uh, we have right now around 170 to 180 members. Uh, it's, it's a big place, we have 450 square meters, it's full of an electronics lab, a lecture room, a big lounge area, we have laser cutters, 3D printers, you name it, we have it. Um, and you can come to the space and start your project that you would normally do at home, but if you get to the point where you get stuck and you don't know how to go further with your project and you start losing interest, you can simply stand up go to the middle of the room and ask does anyone have any clue how to help me with that and then five, usually around five people jump up and give you ten ideas on uh, how to take this further and usually you do something completely different from what you originally planned but it's great fun. Okay. Yeah, we have one piece. You said you want to switch that down to Galileo or do you have to exchange your chip? Only GPS can be able to change, right? Yeah. We're planning to use Donna's Galileo chip. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, any questions so far on the timing hardware? Yes, maybe if I understood it correctly, uh, the oscillator has to be precisely tuned to the specific frequency, right? We right. have a normal yeah. oscillator on this yeah. board for now, but we are planning to use a uh, VZO, mm -hmm. uh, a voltage controlled oscillator, yeah. uh, to do a, um, um, a back, back, backward uh, pass, and so we can uh, trim the oscillator that it's very secure. Mm -hmm. But don't we have to be. Uh, isn't that also more challenging to have a very precise voltage source? Then, or? We have a uh, quite precise uh, voltage source. So it's also about the high And uh, we have two voltage generators. Mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one of the core, uh, well, the core idea here is also the, to make it not that complicated because mm -hmm. we get the one second mm -hmm. uh, pulse from the GPS. And then we're using the oscillator to subdivide mm -hmm. uh, the, the previous second into a number of pulses. And we can actually online track any drift uh, produced by, for instance, uh, heating up or cooling down of the oscillator. Because we always know, one second after the effect actually, how many pulses the oscillator had in the previous second. Mm -hmm. right. And then we can do linear approximation or whatever and decide one second later where in the range of whatever 100 nanoseconds you, your measurement point actually was. Maybe last question. Uh, you said the GPS module is like 20 euros and I don't know about the voltage source, so how much was it like only for the hardware? For the <laughs> uh, well, right now we're in the prototyping phase and we're actually not looking okay. at <laughs> optimizing cost yet. No, so just I, curious about it. I think uh, making the PCB was even more expensive. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah, this is a low, low uh, prototype run. I think we've yeah. got three or four uh, timing PCBs, and the last batch of PCBs cost us, I think, 200 euros or something. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, in case you're wondering, <laughs> um, we're meeting pretty much every Saturday at uh, the hackerspace here in Stuttgart. It's in Stuttgart Wangen. Um, we also, uh, if you want to keep in touch, we have a wiki set up at hgg.io. There is a list of open tasks, including colonization of Mars. So if you want to uh, become something very ambitious, you can do that as well. Um, we have all our source code and uh, issue tracking uh, up on GitHub. So if you have GitHub account, you can uh, raise bugs uh, against our stupid ideas. Uh, we have a public mailing list, which at the moment is not very active, but we're expecting this to change at some point in the future when we actually have something. And we also have uh, this little social media thing in, in case you're whatever. Um, and that's it pretty much for us. So if you ever want to find out what we actually do at this thing called the hackerspace, you can simply Come by and join us and uh, hang out for a minute or two. You'll even get the tour. Um, and well, every Saturday we meet up and do uh, citizen science stuff. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for your time. And more questions. No more questions. I wanted to know what's the difference between pseudo ranging and ranging and real ranging. Oh, that one would be Andreas. We picked a very good timing for pseudo ranging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Finally. Okay. Um, we wanted to have a really, really simple system, and we all know how to call it amateur radio or radio amateurs. I don't know. Uh, I don't care. Okay. Ham operators. Yeah. Okay. We don't have a ham operating license, so we can't send. At least not so wide that we will have some uh, visiting uh, vans from the postal service here. So we don't want to send out something. We do. Okay. We're sending out something for ranging, or receive something and then we send it out. But in our case, we are just receiving the signals, and uh, yeah, 
we don't want to get into trouble. We are just receiving and listening, whatever is coming, coming, coming into the antenna will be stored. And with one reception point, it's not possible. You, you, can, you can do ranging with pulsing, one way and so on, but it's not so. At least I don't know how to do it, but I understand two the ranging with at least four or five different stations so that you can have a, a 2D or 3D calculation to it. I think that's why that we are using this simple approach. Yeah. But the system is so modular that but afterwards uh, the user said, hey, I'm a hammer operator, the system is great, I will... In Germany, in Germany we would call it Frickel, we will just do something together, glue it and it's working. And the person can do this afterwards, but he has to have the perfect license for it and we don't have it right now. Ah. Yeah, right now the system is, uh, if you're looking at any radio frequency stuff uh, or receiving something, we're fully passive. So we're not sending on anything. Until from now. <laughs> well, at least we're not planning to send anything, it might happen by <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any more questions?